Good evening. This is Maestro Cortello, Cortello with the Dawn of War 2 Retribution Elite Modcast. <clears throat> today we have a 1v1 on Leviathan Hive. Our first player today is Freeman1800. I'll just say Freeman to make it easier. He is playing as the Lord General. This is the only hero who is a squad. He's like the command squad. He has a, some stormtroopers that give him a little extra DPS. Decent at range, decent at melee. Mostly a support hero. He's got a bunch of abilities that are used for buffing guardsmen and stormtroopers and katachans. Just area of effect buffs. Um, they come from all of his war gears. His opponent is Farzo60. I'll just call him Farzo. All these numbers in people's names. He is playing a Sindri, Trollface, Chaos Sorcerer. This is, I believe, the, this is the DLC Sorcerer. I'm blanking out on what the name for that chapter was, but he looks pretty different. The Sorcerer is a spell-casting hero. He shoots out powerful Doom Bolts. He has a lot of teleportation capabilities. He can snare and manipulate and mind control. So we've got a 1v1 between some pretty different players from what you would normally expect to be cast on a 1v1 channel. Some new names, relatively new names. Uh, that being said, these are actually still some really good players. Farzo is... He definitely doesn't show up too much in replays. I think in part because he actually plays more retail than Elite Mod. But Torpid has often said that he is one of the best Eldar players around. Here he's not actually playing as Eldar. M meanwhile, Freeman is also someone who I, I feel like I haven't even really seen him much at all. But he is also, he is also a very good player, and I pretty much just found that out by watching this game as well as, um, as well as the fact that before I observed this game, I played both of these players in 1v1, and they both completely trashed me, so I can attest personally to their skill levels. So we've got Chaos versus Imperial Guard. Now, this is a matchup that the traditional knowledge has always been that Chaos is pretty strongly favored against Imperial Guard, but with both with my experience um, playing it in certain cases as well as watching some matchups, I'm really beginning to rethink that. In particular, the double sentinel play and the pressure that puts on is... Aside from it being very strong in general, it's particularly strong against Chaos, and stronger against Chaos than any other race. And particularly against Chaos, it really seems like the the, the, the dual sentinel pressure in Tier 1 is pretty much a winning situation for the Imperial Guard, and if played correctly, they can basically win the game in Tier 1. And I believe that's what Toy Lali actually used to do back in retail. Of course, back then, Sentinels were stronger, but even right now, the dual Sentinel play seems to really just have, have an advantage over Chaos in Tier 1. Certainly, at least over the Sorcerer, it actually seems that way. Since the best thing the Sorcerer has going for him in this in this matchup, or at least in Tier 1, is using Doom Bolts to do a lot of area of effect damage to Guardsmen. But in Tier 1, if you get the double Sentinel play, it's really the Sentinels that are doing most of the work. They're the ones that are exposing themselves the most, and those are the ones that need to be pressured and forced off somehow. And it's pretty tough, because we've got Farzo going for a double Chaos Space Marine build, and that's, that's usually a less common build these days, um, certainly for Elite players. But I think there are a lot of good reasons to do it in this matchup. And I've also found some... It can actually be pretty difficult to make a single Chaos Space Marine build work. It's It can be done, but um, it can also be tough. And I mean, usually the typical build for a Sorcerer is two Heretics, a Chaos Space Marine, and a Havoc. Now the Havoc would be immobile. In this case, we're trading out the Havoc for some mobile firepower, and although you don't really get the area, of, area control that you would get with the Havoc, because you can't get too close to the Havoc, you get more more DPS and more mobile DPS. And we also have Eternal War on one of these Chaos Space Marines. And, I mean, if we notice right now, Farzo's not, he's, Farzo's not exactly losing the game, but he's already opening up with a significant VP deficit, and it's, it's very difficult for him to 
it's going to be very difficult for him to hold on to those VPs. Uh, also difficult for him to win engagements. And the Chaos Space Marines, that gives that gives Farzo some decent firepower. But he had to retreat one squad of Chaos Space Marines out of there pretty early because it was getting very close to losing a model. And I mean, if we look at the way that Farzo is pretty much straight up losing this engagement. And that's, that's especially part of the effect of having every single one of your units in this Imperial Guard composition being a ranged unit. You really get a lot of kiting power. Imperial Guard is one of the best races for kiting. Because you pretty much have, certainly in Tier 1, every single one of their units is a ranged unit, aside from like the Commissar Lord. And then Chaos, which has usually a more melee-oriented a more melee-oriented composition overall. Um, and then to the extent that they have range damage, certainly in Tier 1, the Chaos range DPS is really not that high. It's pretty average, and if anything, uh, below average, consider it's considering it is actually worse than, than pretty much all other races. I mean, there are exceptions to that, and that's not to say that you, you can't have decent range DPS, but it's typically expensive, and it's usually not the most balanced composition. Well, I mean, I guess it's... It, it would be tough to call it balanced when ranged damage is usually lacking in the Chaos Army, but usually the Plague Champion is the most ranged-oriented commander. The, um, the Chaos Lord can also kind of do that with the, with the Combi Flamer. And I think the double cast space ring play is actually a pretty good idea, even though it's, even though it's not technically winning. It's it's pretty much not really going to be winning against double sentinels, but I think you can just I think with cast you can hold your ground a little bit better and put on a whole lot more pressure with double cast space rings than a single one. With a single cast space ring, you're you first of all you really you're probably going to get models bled on that single chaos space ring squad. You're going to have a lot of trouble holding ground. And if you go with a Havoc with only one Chaos Space Marine, you really need to make sure your positioning on the Havoc is correct. But then part of what works of, with Double Sentinels is that it's, you can often find a way to flank and get behind or get outside the firing arc of the Havoc. Sorcerer does have the Sword of Flame, and he's actually emphasizing uh, teleporting in with the Sorcerer more than actually using Doom Bolts. And the... The damage potential of Doom Bolts is actually much, much higher than teleporting in with the Sorcerer. But part of what Farzo may be going for is that when he ties up one of the squads, he can tie up one of the Guardsman squads, then that Guardsman squad won't be able to do range damage. So that will cut into Freeman's kiting ability. Instead, it will be like Freeman's Guardsman squads trying to run around and not get tied up, and during that time, they won't really be shooting. Now we also have a grenade launcher upgrade from Freeman on his Lord General, and he did this in a game before me as well. And this has some. There, he, he uses. I think he used this ability very well. Now, one or this warrior very well. Now the actual grenade launcher um, weapon is not that powerful and not that great, but it it can actually be nice for attacking setup teams like this Havoc. Especially if he can get an angle where the Lord General is not exposed, maybe shoot over some cover or some some line of sight blockers. And he also uses that move, move, move ability just to be more mobile uh, with basically just with his guardsmen. So if anything, I feel like the engagements have, st especially since Farzo got this havoc, I feel like the engagements have started to go pretty well in his favor. And I feel like the double chaos space screens by themselves weren't really enough, and in my experience, a Havoc and just a single chaos space screen can also be definitely very well dealt with with a double sentinel build. So I think it's actually really the combination of both the double chaos space screens as well as the Havoc that's, that's keeping Farzo at bay, or not keeping Freeman at bay and keeping him in this game. That being said, we now have a Camara. No counters out yet for this Camara whatsoever. And I like the way he was driving the Camara in the middle, 
so that both the side guns, yeah, some of them were shooting at the sorcerer, some of them were shooting at like the Havoc and Chaos Space Marines. It's actually really using like every single gun on this Chimera. There's actually a lot of guns on this Chimera. I mean, there's there's the top multi-laser turret, there's the heavy bolter on the hull, and then we have these side lasers as well. And it's it's often difficult to get all of the guns firing. Usually if you have it slightly to the side, you can get uh, the side multi-lasers as well as the turret multi-laser to shoot together and focus on the same target. So there's a, lot, there's a lot of potential damage coming out of the Camaro, but you can't really say, oh, it does 80 DPS because you can't really get all of the guns to fire on the same target. I mean, there technically is... I don't, I don't know if that's the exact stat, but I'm, like, combining the damage type or the the stats. I think I think each weapon is roughly 20 DPS. The multi-laser on the, the multi-laser turret is roughly 20, the side lasers are 20 and I think the heavy bolter is around 20. And that's that's a rough estimate. I actually don't really have the exact statistics these days. And that's kind of just a indication of how my perspective and things have been changing. I actually really don't pay attention to the numbers as much as I used to, so I can really only give you rough estimates on this one. Anyway, Laz Cannon took a shot on the Camara. Now the Laz Cannon it's actually going to be pretty tough. Freeman's going to need to be very careful with his micro in order to keep this Laz Cannon alive. Oh, that is the end of one of the Guardsman squads. A Dark Flames on retreat. Very nice by Farzo. So Freeman now loses one of his Guardsman squads. And I missed it, but Farzo also lost one of his... He lost one of his heretics. And, you know, it's interesting. He had that second heretic in there. Um, I think the second heretic was a good idea, even though the combination of going both double heretics and double chaos space marines does mean you have an extremely wreck heavy tier one. Wow, that sentinel just went down to um, the blood letters. He kind of dropped his micro there. Another thing that's going on is he has the sentinel. He has the stomp on this sentinel. I don't think he actually had the stomp on that other sentinel. Oh, and look at this. The sorcerer tried to steal the bunker and he actually went down trying to get inside the bunker so that was um, a bit unlucky for him I suppose although at the same time I think even if he got into the bunker with as little health as he had the damage from the multi-laser from the sentinel as well as the chimera probably could have j just killed the, s the sorcerer while he was inside the bunker so chimera is definitely going to counter unmarked chaos space marines and here we've got the Havoc running around. Havoc gets stumped, but, you know, it's going to go... It looks like he's going for the bunker. But there are some of these... <laughs> I was going to say, there, there are a bunch of... He did set that bunker so that it was rigged to be destroyed. And before I could even finish that, he actually destroyed the bunker. And whenever a building gets destroyed with any squad inside it, that squad gets wiped regardless of what squad it is and regardless of how much health it has. If you put knobs inside of a... If you put knobs inside of a bunker or any building and the building gets destroyed, those knobs will get wiped from full health. All, like, 3,500 hit points or whatever. So that was a Havoc, a much weaker squad, but it still got wiped from full health. I think that was a, a pretty good idea and smart idea from Freeman. Uh, he didn't pay as much for the bunker as Farzo did for the Havoc. And that also puts Farzo in a situation where he now has no AB whatsoever against Avil. Farzo is choosing to get a Dreadnought, though, and that will be his new source of AV. Freeman himself actually doesn't have much AV. He's got the Sentinel with the Missile Launcher. Which is, it's actually pretty good as AV. The best thing about the Sentinel with the Missile Launcher is that you can always, like, weave in and out. You can kind of kite. Uh, the Sentinel can always just run away and kind of poke at a vehicle with its missiles. So it tends to have an advantage over most other vehicles in that, in that respect. Even though the, the actual DPS is not that powerful. And, I mean, if we look, we can look at the DPS right here. I'm pretty sure this hasn't been changed Actually, it might be different for the grenade, for the frag missiles, but the crack missiles, it just says 8.22 explosive damage, and I don't think that's been changed. By comparison, the attack missile launchers are are about 10 DPS, and that's not very powerful either. Something like a LAS cannon is, is going to be doing about 30 to 40, which is quite a bit more powerful. But you can always just run away, quickly sneak in, 
All right, we've got the Chaos Dreadnought has already been upgraded to the Mark of Zeech, and that's a that's actually a very very powerful source of anti-vehicle damage. So Freeman needs to, start, needs to start moving back though, and he's just standing his guardsmen in the fire, and he's also using some heals from, I think the Lord General, yeah, the Lord General has the sergeant, so he can pass out some heals. Although, ooh, we have a creeping barrage, it gets those Chaos Space Marines away. Pretty nicely played. Unfortunately, Freeman has not yet switched to the crack missiles, so he's really not doing a whole lot of damage to the Sentinel. I mean, the grenade launcher missiles are actually doing some damage, but not that much, and he's getting the Sentinel shot at. Freeman is also curiously, like, not microing it. Mean, he really needs to actually micro out of there. He's, he's relying a lot on the power. This is a repair bunker, so he's really trying to rely a lot on that to keep him through this engagement, but I feel like some micro could help him out a bit more. Farzo has no repair support. Does Farzo even have... He's got enough red to warp out the, the Chaos Dreadnought, but he took out the Chimera. Freeman, unfortunately, is not really microing here. He's just, just deciding to just tough it out, which in some ways it's kind of working, but at the same time, I don't know if it's that great of an idea. I mean... Well, in this case, Farzo actually uses the warp global to teleport in some Chaos Space Marines and give himself the edge over the Sentinel, which, it does force the Sentinel off. I wonder, will he actually take out the Sentinel with the Chaos Sorcerer? I don't think so. Shoot some Doom Bolts, pretty close call, down to 18 hit points. But, um, Freeman has lost a lot. He's got a massive VP lead, and that's, um, a lot of that came with a lot of the early pressure that he had. Unfortunately, I think he, he kind of just gave up a lot of stuff in that engagement. That wasn't the most well-managed engagement on his part. So Farzo replacing a heretic squad. Originally, Farzo had those two heretic squads. And I mean, I'd say, you know, having having multiple heretic squads in this matchup, I, I feel that too many heretics is... Certainly, I don't, I don't like a three heretic build in this matchup, unless... Unless, like, at least one of those is going to be grenade launchers, if not if not multiple. But I think it's still nice to have a heretic squad or two. Probably at least one for worship and repairs, and then maybe another for map control. The sorcerer typically wants du dual heretic builds, but that usually that, that's usually done instead of dual chaos space marine builds. Anyway. Freeman now going for some Kashkins, which is, that's actually going to be really tough, because I, like the, I actually, you know, at this point I actually feel, at least in the Sorcerer against the Lord General, and I, I do think the Lord General is, in some ways, very good at resisting um, Chaos Heroes and the Sorcerer. He can definitely resist a lot of Doombolt damage if he gets hit the Sergeant and passes out med packs. But in this matchup... You know, I'm, I'm questioning what the overall, who is overall favor in the matchup, but I'm, at this point, I'm, I'm willing to say that the, uh, in Tier 1, it favors Imperial Guard with that dual Sentinel pressure. Ooh, and then there goes another Sentinel. Now, in Tier 3, the whole thing about Kashkins has, has also kind of changed things a bit, I think, uh, for the Imperial Guard, and that's something that could be giving them a bit more of an edge. Kashkins are just an extremely powerful unit that didn't exist before, and... I mean, they really are, like, on an entirely different level than uh, Stormtroopers or Guardsmen. They're just way more powerful. Okay. I think the consensus is that consensus is that they are a little too powerful, and I am inclined to believe that. They are being reworked slightly in the next patch. I believe they will actually not get their... I believe the Weapon Expertise upgrade is being removed. But I imagine they will still be very powerful. Um... In part just because <laughs> introducing new powerful ranged units has been a thing in Elite Mod. There are flash kits, there are... There are Kashkins, of course. I mean, we can even count, like, Chaos Terminators, and... What else? Yeah, Dark Reapers. So, I mean, if Kashkins are going to be in Tier 3, and if they're going to cost more than Stormtroopers, they probably should be more powerful than Stormtroopers. 
especially if they're not going to have infiltration. Oh, this could be bad. If we have a Doom Blast on the Heretics, Doom Blast comes a little bit late. I think an earlier Doom Blast might have done more, but the squad might go down anyway. In fact, it does. So Freeman now has two squads. He's lost a lot of squads. Farzo still has a bunch. He's lost, well, he lost a Havoc and he lost two Heretics. Farzo also has massive resources. He's getting a Predator. He, he could have even saved for maybe a Great Unclean one or a Phobos if he really wanted, because he really had a lot of resources. And we also have a Lehman Russ out for, free, for Freeman. I was about to call him Freedom. Lehman Russ, a very powerful tank, and it, it has the 35% damage resistance, which is also something that is very, very powerful, and I don't... That's something I also wonder if maybe that's a little too good. Um, backed by repair bunkers or even guards with repair support, the, Le the Lehman Russ is just a very, very tough nut to crack. Now, we do ha definitely have some sources of AV for Farzo. He's got a level 3 Zine Stretnaut, which is actually going to be doing a lot of damage. He's actually going to be doing more more damage, or at least more DPS, uh, than the Lehman Russ, although of course the Lehman Russ will resist some of that damage. Grenade goes off, but I think the the, pre the blood letters actually phase out so they don't take damage from that. They need to get out of here because they're just staying in there. And here comes the Autocannon Predator. Now, this Predator right now is actually pretty clearly inferior to the Lehman Russ. And if we notice, the Autocannon right now isn't actually doing that much damage. I think it's doing something like maybe 80 damage per shot um, to the Lehman Russ, and that's that's... That's including that damage resistance that the Lehman Russ has. Um, so right now the Chaos Predator has less health, less health, takes more damage. Wait, did I say the Predator has less health, takes more damage, does less damage to the Predator? Yeah, it's doing about 80 damage, which really isn't that much. And it's chasing. Although the Lehman Russ is in a bit of an a risky position. It needs to really keep microing, though. It really cannot afford to stay here, and it needs, yeah, like, immediate Guardsman repair support. Because, again, the, the Guardsman repair support on something like a Lehman Russ is going to be pretty ridiculous. So, it, we know it's going to take two more shots, but here's some Guardsman repair support, and it should, needs to get, like, roughly above... Oh, it came very close to coming above that, like, 80 hit point threshold. It keeps getting there. Getting repaired, and there... And we have... We now have double Guardsman repair support seems like the Chaos Dreadnought can't really do enough damage as well, and I actually feel like that Barrage might have been a bad idea. Now the Dreadnought has been hit by a Crack Grenade, so it the weapons are actually shut down. And he's actually, it looks like he's trying to go in for Force Melee. No, he stopped, he just got closer for some reason, but it's obvious that this Dreadnought is not going to win this fight, so two vehicles... Two very, two very powerful vehicles go down to one Lehman Russ, and that Lehman Russ got to level two with that. And he actually, he was upgrading to the Vanquisher, but then he canceled that upgrade, and that Vanquisher upgrade would have actually been really good for, for fighting off those vehicles, but he didn't even need it. And now that he doesn't, now that he didn't get the Vanquisher, um, the cannon that he has now will actually be, will actually be better against everything else that Freeman has. Points, sir. Now we have some auto cannon terminators. This definitely is like kind of like a range superiority unit. They're good against pretty much everything. Definitely do a lot of damage to a huge amount of damage to regular infantry. Still pretty good against heavy infantry, and then okay against super heavy infantry and okay against vehicles. Now sometimes I, I like to get Chaos Terminators against other tanks, or against tanks. I, wow, look at how much damage they did to the guards. So they're definitely, they definitely specialize at killing regular infantry. I feel like they can be good against tanks in some cases because they're so tough, they can stay in. They don't risk getting killed as easily as, like, your own tank. Meanwhile, they still put out some anti-vehicle damage, and actually I think they put out about as much anti-vehicle damage as a regular tank. Although they don't do it in a single shot. They don't do really do burst damage. They do more like the steady DPS. Unfortunately, I don't really think it's going to be enough against a Lehman Russ getting repair support. I mean, Lehman Russ with repair support, you really need a lot of extra. I think you really need a snare. You really need some very high DPS to deal with it. 
Uh, and it looks like the Ch yeah the Chaos Terminators are actually pretty much losing this. They're taking damage. They're in Zinch Worship so that they'll get a 20% range damage resistance. But this this engagement is still not going in their favor at all. And eventually they're going to bleed models, and that's actually definitely going to be the win for the Lehman Rust, which won't bleed at all. Yeah, I mean that's I, I believe that's a 150 requisition and 50 power to reinforce that Terminator model. And it looks like Farzo might also lose this now. Oh. It was a two-man heretic squad, but that that next uh, cannon shot just wiped them both out. But um, the, the default battle cannon on the Lehman Rust is actually very, very good for um, for anti-infantry, basically. Now Terminators, oh, pretty lucky to still have two models at at 300, um, 320 health. But Farzo has done a lot to even out the VPs. Now 103 to 61, and Farzo's the one with the double cap. So these guys doing nothing here. They could bash the generators, although at the same time, I feel like that's not that big of a priority, considering how much red Freeman has. Freeman could use both a rocket run and and a creeping barrage without even bashing these generators. I think a bigger priority for him right now is actually definitely the VPs. It's a double cap in Farzo's favor. So I don't think... I don't... Well, I mean, not that it took him that much time, but there's also not that much time to spare. Alright, this Chaos Space Dream squad right here is definitely going to be in trouble against all these guardsmen as well as the... as well as the everything, pretty much. Meanwhile, Farzo's doing a good job to start winning on map control. He's got the VP lead. Freeman, I think, is... Freeman is actually having trouble. He's starting to lose the map control a little bit. He just committed his entire army to retaking uh, his natural VP. He's going to lose Farzo's natural VP, although now he's going for the middle. And actually, he should be able to... Yeah, he's going to be able to overpower these Chaos Space Marines with what he has. Although we do have a Dark Flames, which might actually give uh oh what a nice play right there that was uh, a valkyrie reinforcement from the lord general another thing that you don't see very often but very very well used there to use the valkyrie reinforcement to reinforce all those guardsmen and especially the kashikans because the guardsmen the guardsmen it would it would actually cost more to use the valkyrie reinforcement on the guardsmen given how cheaply they can reinforce at base or from a bunker or reinforcement point here is a rocket run oh no though it looks like his own guardsmen are caught in that and yeah he just nuked his own stuff more than he nuked farzo might even lose one of those cashkins i feel like he actually should lose one of those cashkins all right, he doesn't lose the Kashkins, but a double cap for Freeman, and actually soon to be a triple cap. Bloodletter is chasing down the Lord General, and he's just, Freeman's just like kiting away, and now he's engaging the Bloodletters. And the Bloodletters can't really afford to go for the point because then they will actually just kill, get killed by the Lord General. Oh, and we have Chaos Space Marines losing a ton of models. They are not going to... A cannon shot for this is going to be devastating. Cannon shot... I think three... At least... Wow. Just everything died there. And the Lehman Rust goes down, too, at the end. But that's the game in favor of Freeman. And he is the winner of that game. That was actually a really good game. Hope you enjoyed the cast. Have a good night.